to Helen and Timothy Hollister, the current residents of 32 Knoll Street. If you were any other family, I would have skipped the formalities, but since I introduced myself to you by skipping the formalities in the first place, I suppose I shall have to conclude this relationship by being as cordial and direct as I can. I didn't start by writing a letter, and that would seem rather backwards to anyone else in any other situation, but given my current circumstances, the stipulations of what some might refer to as my occupation, and the general effect I have on others, I thought our acquaintanceship should be a short one. But you've done the exact opposite of what I'd hoped. With all the hours you've spent on the infernal machines of yours, and the endless parade of sham physics and so-called occultists, all the times you've tried to contact me with Ouija boards and automatic writers and the like. You are all, without a doubt, the most tenacious family I've ever come across, so I have need to break the rules, if there ever were any in my line of work. Before you lose patience, please note that in order to explain who I am and give the point I was getting at, I'll need to go about this in a roundabout way. If I don't, you might not believe a word of it. You may remember how during your first night here, that antique grandfather clock of yours that you had just set up in the main hallway fell over and shattered mere inches from where you, Helen, were standing. That was my handshake. I could have hurt you, Helen. I could have toppled that old clock, chimes, glass, and all onto you. It wouldn't have killed you, but it would have required a hospital trip. All those fractured bones sprains, lacerations, it would have soured your disposition towards the place quite quickly. It would have set a good tone for what was to come next. Maybe it would it would at least have made you the dissenting voice and you inevitably decided to leave. But alas, I decided to be merciful. I think that was my biggest mistake. Even as I write this, I can sense your derision and disbelief in what I'm insinuating, despite the fact that this letter is to confirm a theory that you've all been following. So let me offer some more concrete evidence. After I greeted you, I contented myself in doing small things over longer stretches of time, closing doors in the middle of the night, moving chairs while you and yours weren't looking, setting off the mouse traps when you began putting them out and interfering with your security cameras. Typical, but I had grown lazy in my duties. You stopped noticing these things as much after a few weeks, but by then, you had other things to worry about. Like the dark figure your son saw at the foot of his bed every night for a week. Or the presence that you felt watching you from the other side of that pane of glass while you showered. You didn't even think for a second that I was your husband, did you, Helen? You were too afraid to wipe away the condensation. Too afraid at what you might see. I could taste your raw animal fear and then vulnerability through the glass. Do you think you might see a corpse? The specter, a previous tenant. As befitting the stories that you'd heard, maybe something more substantial. Hopefully doubt and worry are creeping up on you, but maybe your patience is wearing thin, so I'll offer a far more intimate proof. This time... I'll direct it to you, Timothy. You didn't tell your wife about some of the dreams you've had during those first three weeks, did you? Dreams of being crammed into your old toy chest in the room you had as a child. How you listened to the lions pat around your room, sniffing and scratching, getting closer and closer with each revolution until they could finally smell you and then... That nightmare in particular was one which plagued you throughout your adolescence, was it not? You'd forgotten about it until you moved here. How did you feel when it resurfaced? Did you feel nauseous at the memory was brought back to the surface? Did you, did you still remember all those quiet nights spent huddling under your covers, listening, anticipating the sound of heavy breathing from inside your closet? Do you remember the man who inspired those fears? The vagrant who had made his way into your home while your parents were vacationing in Florida. The man you hid from when you heard his footsteps down the hall as he searched through each room. Do you remember hearing him go into your room, listening from within that toy chest as he walked around? Remember what you felt when he opened the lid and looked down at you with those dull, glassy eyes? 
course you do. I, I doubt you could ever forget it. This is only one nightmare of many, which I can now access. The longer you and yours stay in this house, the more attuned you become to me, and the more deeply I can gaze into you. Right now, you're hopefully looking around you, staring into the shadows, wondering when you'll hear the rattle of bones, the clamor of chains. Doubtless, some part of you is wondering how this is even possible. If this is some kind of joke, but I'm willing to bet that a larger part of you is alight with the excitement and terror, because now you have your confirmation. Does it frighten you? Knowing that ghosts are real. That there is, in fact, life after death. That the human consciousness can exist incorporeally outside of time's reach. All those possibilities. Maybe some of your loved ones are still anchored to this plane somewhere you know. And that brings me to the issue at hand. All these aggressions were not meant to kill you, scare you, traumatize you, even hurt you, if need be, but not kill you. I remember what it was like to be warm, to breathe, to be able to touch, speak, move freely across the world. I, I never willingly take that away from another, especially not if there is a chance they might end up like me, bound to an earthly prison and tethered by some arbitrarily decided length and width of physical space. I keep you safe from that, or I suspect worse if I could. Things are moving beyond my control. I'm afraid I'm not for myself, but for you, because, I, because I'm not the only supernatural force at work here. Well, there's not much I know about things which sleeps beneath you. Even after all these years, I don't know where it comes from. Whether it was here before the house was built, or if it was summoned after, or even if it could think on our level. In fact, in fact, I was 120 years dead trapped in this place before I even felt its presence. What I do know is that it drifts in the darkness between the foundations of the bedrock, stretched taut beneath the boundaries of human perception, the material world unseen. But they're all the same. It's not a ghost. Nor is it something so easily classified as vampire, zombie, ghoul. It's a being being without warmth, breath, a thing inorganic yet not artificial, a thing of fractiles, horns, broken limbs, alien, in the truest sense of the word. So alien, in fact, that my discovering it led me to be reminded of my own humanity. I'm sure, but now you've... I'm sure by now you've started to feel its stirrings. Even if you don't recognize it. In fact, you you assumed my hand in most of these recent disturbances. In fact, you assumed my hand in these most recent disturbances. This fresh batch of attacks which go far beyond what you thought a haunting could be. It is this recent set of events as well as your utter stubbornness and damnable curiosity which prompts me to take this measure. I say to you now, these are not my doing. The dead flies on the sill, the earwigs in the basement, those massive spiders on the eaves, those, those are my doing. The yellow flowers that poisoned your son, the cat found in tatters behind the refrigerator, the naked, wet thing that each of you dreamt straddled you as you lay immobilized, those, those are not my doing. I was the figure that you saw son in the attic window, Timothy. I was the presence your wife felt beside her bed all those nights, and I was the hand that moved the planchette of the Ouija board that your daughter was playing with two weeks previously. But I am not the owner of the voice that you heard through your son's baby monitor. I am not the cause of that spot on the paneling below the stairs. You know the one, or at least one or two of you do. You tried to deny what the buried, primitive part of you tells you. But you felt that spot rise and fall like the belly of a breathing animal. Your fingers have brushed those fine, ticklish hairs, and in each of you, I can sense the dread strengthening its hold as your attempts to rationalize what you see. 
you can see that that spot is growing. The longer you stay here, the more protecting layers of ignorance get stripped away. The more your psyche is barred, the more you see, the closer it serves. I've managed to drive out every person I've ever met since I first encountered that inhuman sleeper in 1889. The world back then was still steeping in its superstition. The dread of tangible threats hadn't fully taken the place of the fear of the unknown, so my job was simpler. Make my mark that the word spread relish the silence. Passage of time. You, though, seem to represent the apex of this new mindset modern men have all adopted. While you're still doubtlessly afraid of the unknown, you silence that primal part of you which tells you to run and instead given yourself over to your curiosity. Your recent attempts to record my comings and goings on those machines are proof enough of that. You run towards the darkness, not from it, and that can cost you not just your bodies and minds but your souls as well. That creature is waking up, it's feeling for you. Soon those flowers start to push their way through the cracks in the pavement, choke the rest of the garden, and things which caused your... That creature is waking up. It's feeling for you. Soon those flowers will start pushing their way up through the cracks in the pavement and choke the rest of the garden. The things which killed your cat will begin to attack you. Maybe you'll even wake one night to find one of those nude cold things. Aren't the conjurations of a nightmare? This house will come alive. The entity will begin to pull at the threads of natural law. My power will be shunted to some place dark and confining, and when that slumbering eldritch thing wakes fully, it will pull you all the way down to meet it. It's been reaching out to both of you. I've been forced from your dreams more than once in the past week. I don't know what it will do if it gets in, and that should scare you more than any torture I could describe read my proofs and my reasons. You know, you know about what lies beneath you. Now get out. Run and don't look back. Find some place far away. Keep an eye on your son. Keep your minds and your eyes from the occult. Things like this leave marks. Now get out. Now. Let the sleeper stay asleep and leave this place to rot. With utmost urgency. Sign. A certain shadow on the wall. Hey there once again kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I just wanted to give you a big thank you for watching tonight's video. If you guys ever wanted to help support the show, you can always do so if you watch the show on youtube.com slash Mr. Creepypasta, or find the Mr. Creepypasta Storytime podcast on iTunes, on Google Play, and on Spotify. And also, if you ever want to check out my wife's tea shop, it's etsy.com slash ivory monocle tea, where she sells hand-blended herbal teas in the theme of Dungeons and Dragons and Harry Potter and Final Fantasy and the like. You can find the link for it, as well as many, many, many other links in the description down below. And, drumroll please, a big, big, big thank you to everybody supporting me at patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta. People such as... Tacia Lynn, Gino Baga Arneo, Daniel Paulson, Trace Miles, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Wayne Milstead, Dr. Strawberry, Chempinski, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Nicholas Saeed Elyasin, Buddy Burrows, Stephen Van Huss, Kai Albertson, Goonington, G Weevil 3, Chance Burnett, Diane Kraus, Asia, Gabrielle DeBaca, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Cindy Barney, Titty Connoisseur, <laughs> really? Did he cut his ear? Melissa Swagart, Dante Rao, Last Blade Song, Cross Rights, The Ginger Bros, Eliminator 86, Andrew Steinberg, Jason Sistma, Holy Realm, and Rafael Rodriguez. Thank you so much to you guys out there on Patreon, to all of you listening to either the podcast or the YouTube show. And that is everything, guys. Thank you so much for listening, and sweet dreams. <laughs>